All right, in this video, we go over section 5.6, the real zeros of a polynomial. In this section, we will review the remainder and the factor theorem and then use the rational zero theorem or also known as the rational root theorem to list all potential zeros of a given polynomial function. Then we're gonna use that theorem in order to find the actual zeros or actual roots and apply that to solve polynomial equations. So using the remainder and the factor theorems first. Let's go over those two theorems briefly and actually apply them. So suppose we have some polynomial function f of x. The, the thing is, is if we divide that function, that polynomial function by x minus c, then the remainder will be the function evaluated at the value of c. And then the factor theorem, uh, it's, a, it's a special case, a particular case in which, um, in which, if, in which if we get uh, f of c equals zero, then that x minus c is going to be a factor of the polynomial. Otherwise, if we don't get a zero, which is what we did before with the polynomial long division, then in such cases, we are not gonna get that x minus c is um, it's a factor because we are gonna get a remainder. So let f be a polynomial function, then x minus c is a factor if and only if f of c equals zero. This if and only if, what does that mean? Every time you read this if and only if, it means that this uh, this huge statement has to um, has two statements separately on the one side and on the other side as well. If f of c equals zero, then x minus c is a factor, and if x minus c is a factor, then f of c equals zero. So let's apply these two theorems right here. Let's apply them to this couple of exercises. So use the remainder theorem to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus c. Then use the factor theorem to determine whether x minus c is a factor of f of x. So you might be thinking, do we have to do the long division? No. All we do is, in this case, if x minus 2 is given, then c equals the 2. So we are going to evaluate the given function at c equals 2. And if we get um, if we get a remainder of 0, then this is going to be a factor. That's going to be the second part of the question. So evaluate at 2, evaluate at 2, evaluate at 2. So what are we going to get here? Well, um, we're going to get 2 to the 4 power, which is 4 times 16 minus 2 squared, this which is 15 times 4 minus 4. And using a calculator, we get the following. Well, let, let's do the calculation that this is going to be 64 minus 15 times 4, that's a 60. And then minus 4, this is equal to 64 minus 64, which actually equals 0. Okay? So the remain, this means that the remainder, when we do the polynomial long division, between 4x to the 4 minus 15x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2, then the remainder is going to be 0 if you perform this division. But in this case, because we got a 0, then... So, x minus 2 is a factor. of f of x. Okay, that's our conclusion out of it. Now let's look at another example. So evaluate f at c equals one third. Remember we changed the sign because here we have negative c. We need to change that to positive c. So uh, let's see. So f of one third. So this is three times one third to the four plus one third cubed minus 3 times 1 third plus 1. Let's plug in the 1 third. And simplify this. And let's see what we get. 
So here one third, uh, one one third. Well, you know what? Uh, I think I have a little typo here. This was supposed to be positive plus one third, and then we need to change this to negative one third. Okay, sorry about that little typo, and change that to negative. So we are going to obtain one third to the four power. That's uh, three times positive one over eighty one plus, well actually in this case it's going to be minus 1 third cube is 1 over 27 and 3 over 3 cancel, negative times a negative is positive is 1 and then plus this last 1. So in this case we're going to get 3 over 81 reduces to 1 over 27 minus 1 over 27 and this is going to be plus 1 plus 1. These two cancel and we get a 2. So in this case the remainder is 2 when we divide uh, when we divide 3x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 3x plus 1 when we divide that by x plus 1 third. That's the remainder. And because the remainder is other than 0 then therefore x plus one third is not a factor of f of x. All right, we're gonna see a lot about this. All right, let's move on to the next page. See what we have there. Using the rational zeros theorem, also known as the rational root theorem, either way. I'm going to refer to the rational root theorem because that's uh, that's pretty much how I how I learn it. Maybe in high school that's how you learn it as well. But I mean, either way it's the same. Rational root theorem. So what it is about. So we have a polynomial function that we already that we have already seen. This is the generic form a n x to the n blah blah blah. The powers get reduced by one every time until we get to the zero to the x to the zero term to the constant term and in order for this to be a good one a polynomial function the leading coefficient cannot be zero in order to be of degree n and also uh, this uh, the constant term for this particular case cannot be zero either all right so each coefficient here is an integer so we need to find the quotient between p and q where p is all possible factors of the constant term okay let me highlight this so i will go in slow motion here this is p and q must be all the factors of a sub n that is the leading coefficient okay uh, i mean this theorem itself does seem not to tell much about it However, I'm going to do an example in which I will apply this. Okay, so let's see. Given the polynomial 6x to the 4 minus x squared plus 2, determine uh, the number, the maximum number of real zeros that the polynomial function may have and list all the potential zeros. So, number one, because this is degree 4, this implies that the maximum numbers of zeros is 4. There might be only 2 or there might even only 1 maybe or maybe even no zeros well, at all. But we are going to list all the potential zeros. So in this exercise we just list the potential zeros. So number 1 identify P. Okay so P is 2 and q is the leading coefficient so so we're going to do p over q which is 2 over 6 all right 2 over 6 and i'm going i'm going to simplify this 2 over 6 to um Two 
1 over 3. And in this case, I'm going to list all the potential, uh, all the poten all the po all the possible factors of one plus plus and minus, and all potential factors of three, which are one and three. Okay, so so the potential zeros here are going to be. 1 over 1, which is 1, plus minus 1, and 1 over 3, which is plus or minus 1 third. Okay? So those are going to be the potential zeros. How are we going to find them? We're going to do that in the next exercises. Okay, so for now we just list the potential the potential um the potential zeros. Let's actually do one in which besides um, besides finding listing all the potential zeros, we also find them, and this is where we're going to have a lot of fun with the synthetic division or polynomial long division. Well, I'm going to do here. I'm going to do everything using the synthetic division to to save time because it's shorter. All right. So use the rational zero theorem to find all the zeros of each polynomial function. Use the zeros to factor f over the real numbers, okay? They're real numbers. Not imaginary numbers, not complex numbers. In fact, in this section, we are not gonna have any of those until the next one, 5.7, which uh, generalizes this idea by including those uh, zero that are complex numbers, extends all of them. All right, so first we need to find this P over Q. Again, this is P and 3, which is the leading coefficient, is q. So p over q, I'm going to say this is 30 over 3, which reduces to 10 over 1. So I'm going to list all possible factors of 10. All the possible factors of 10 are 1, plus or minus, other factors of 10, 2 is another factor Another factor of 10, 5 is another factor of 10, and 10 is a factor of 10. I mean, you can divide 10 by itself. And for the denominator, plus minus 1. Now, I'm going to list all the potential zeros by finding the quotient between each. So plus or minus 1 over 1 is going to be plus minus 1. 2 over 1 is 2. 5 over 1 is, um, what is this, uh, 5 plus minus, and 10 over 1 is 10. So I'm going to have 2, 4, 6, 8 potential zeros. So there's, there's a, a, out of the, out of the zeros, however, only 3, a maximum of 3 will be um be the actual zeros because the degree of the polynomial as you can tell here is three all right so let's see um so what are we going to do here so i'm going to i'm going to test i'm going to test um test negative one i'm going to test them all well maybe not all of them maybe just a few of them so Let's see. If I test negative one, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the the synthetic division, um, and I'm going to write the co the coefficients: three, six, negative fifteen, negative thirty. Three, six, negative fifteen, negative thirty. And do the and do the synthetic division. So drop three times negative one is negative three. Add these two numbers. That's uh, six minus three. That's three. Three times negative one. That's a negative three negative 15 minus 3 that's a negative 18 and negative 18 times negative 1 is plus 18 so we're going to have a remainder of 12 because of this negative 1 is not a 0 which implies that x plus 1 is not a factor
All right, let me do another, another, let me test another zero. I'm going to test uh, one. Okay, test one. Okay, so one, synthetic division, same coefficients, three, six, negative 15, negative 30. And then drop, multiply, three times one is three, six plus three is nine, nine times one is nine, negative 15 plus nine, that's negative six. And then negative six times one, that's negative six, so we get negative 36, so in this case, we got a remainder different than zero, so one is not a zero. And for the same reason, x minus one is not a factor. Of f of x. Let's be specific here, of f of x. Okay, let's do another one. Let's try and test another one. Let me see if I'm gonna have enough space here. Oh, that's enough. All right, I'm gonna test, uh, I'm gonna test negative two. How about that? Okay, we already, we already tested negative one and positive one. None of these were, um, none of these were zeros, okay? So, uh, let's see. Now let's try, let's test negative two. Okay, so negative two, that's a three, six, negative 15, negative 30. Okay, drop three times negative two, that's a negative six. Six minus six, that's zero, zero times negative two is zero. Negative 15 plus zero, negative 15. And then negative, that's a negative is positive. 15 times two, that's a 30. And if we add this, oh, look at this. Finally, we got a zero because the remainder is zero. Okay, let's call this the remainder. So, again, okay, let me write it down here. X equals negative two is a zero. Therefore, x plus two is a factor. Of f of x. So now this polynomial that I, that we were given here, I'm gonna write it here in factored form. So f of x is now x plus two times, where is the other part of the polynomial coming from? Well, again, keep something in mind. Keep in mind that this came from x cubed, okay, this was constant, linear, quadratic, cubic. Remainder zero, constant, linear, quadratic. So it's gonna be three x squared plus zero x, which is just three x minus 15, all right? Three x minus 15. 3x squared minus 15. All right, I claim that we can still factor this one out, factoring out the GCF, I will factor out the three. Okay, but we need to write this in factor form. Here we have some sort of a difference of squares, even though it's not perfect squares. However, I'm gonna set this factor. I mean, the next thing I could try doing is finding, uh, testing all their, all these remaining potential zeros, which in fact, they are not gonna work because you will see what happens here. What I'm gonna do is set x squared minus five equal to zero and solve this baby equation. x squared equals five, take the, the, the square root on both sides, x equals plus or minus the square root of five. So f of x, will be written in factor form as three times x plus two, x minus root of five, x plus root of five. In fact, you will be surprised when you're doing these type of exercises in either 
the homework or on an exam sometimes uh, some of those um, some of those potential zeros are not even used and the type of zero that we got here uh, they were not rational in, in fact this root of 5 and negative root of 5 they are irrational numbers so again the list that we come up here is only of potential zeros not the actual zeros so zeros one of them is negative 2 the other one is negative root of 5 and the other one is root of 5 so this final answer for this example all right let's do another example that most likely it's going to take the entire page so that's why I printed the notes in, in the same page here all right so we have a uh, next to the fourth minus x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 8 all right uh, let's see if we were trying to do this by factoring well there's no way to do this by factoring because uh, factoring by grouping wouldn't work because we do not we do not have a uh, an even number of terms so we can group all right so in this case there's no way around p over q where p is our number eight and q is the leading coefficient which is one so plus or minus all these factors so i'm going to list all possible factors of eight one of the possible factors of eight is one one of the possible factors of eight is two one of the possible factors of 8 is also 4 and itself 8. In the denominator, in the denominator, uh, I'm going to have only the potential factors of 1, which is 1, negative 1. Okay? And then I'm going to list all this. 1 divided by 1, what am I going to get? Plus or minus 1. 2 divided by 1, plus or minus 2. 4 divided by 1 plus or minus 4 8 divided by 1 plus or minus 8 so in this case we're gonna have potentially 8 zeros 2 4 6 8 however the degree of this polynomial is 4 so the highest number of zeros that we are going to obtain here is 4 all right so let's see uh, let me see if I can get anything here uh, what am I gonna do okay so the next thing that uh, that we do is test test a uh, negative one I'm gonna test negative one that is I'm gonna have negative one division and all the coefficients one negative one negative six four eight negative 6, 4, and 8. Okay, I'm going to do the division, drop the 1, 1 times negative 1, that's a negative 1. Add this 2, we get negative 2 times a negative 1, that's positive 2. Minus 6, that gives us negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1, that's 4. 4 plus 4 is 8, and 8 times negative, um, 8 times negative, one that's a negative eight and oh surprise interesting this is the type of uh, exercises that we will typically like all right and in this case um, what are we going to get a remainder of zero so for this reason um, x equals negative one is a zero or a root and x minus one x plus one rather is a factor of f of x notice here I am applying those uh, factor theorems and root theorems all right let's see let's find out if we have another if we can use um, let's see if we can use another one okay so let me test oh actually because I got a zero here um, let's see I'm going to test 
the next one. I'm going to test one. However, before I do that, the test, I'm going to do it on a different polynomial. Okay, because I got a zero already, I'm going to write this uh, polynomial f of x, x to the 4, I'm going to write it in factor form. So this is going to be the first factor, x plus 1. All right, x plus 1 times, okay, again, keep in mind that this is constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic. This is going to be constant, linear, uh, uh, squared, and cubic. So, 1 times x cubed is x cubed negative 2x squared minus 4x and plus 8 okay I know what you I wonder what you're thinking here when you look at this um, when you look at this quadrant at this polynomial as this at this factor you can see that this is factorable by grouping yes in the future I will, I will, we will, we will do on the next example. I will take advantage of that. However, uh, instead of doing that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to use the rational root theorem again. I'm going to use, I'm going to test other values to keep practicing on the connection between the factor theorem and the synthetic division. So let me test another, another zero, which is in this case is, it's one. But in this case, rather than using the first coefficients, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this what we call the the depressed uh, the depressed polynomial and depre we call it like that because that polynomial gets uh, one degree less. So in a way, it's it's degraded or depressed. So in this case, the coefficients are one, negative two, negative four, and eight. All right. So, I'm going to drop this, 1 times 1 is 1 minus 2, that's a negative 1, that's a negative 1, minus 4, that's a negative 5, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, oh, in this case we get a remainder of 3. What do we know about that? Well, remainder equals 3, uh, x minus, I mean, x equals 1 is not a zero and x minus one is not a factor. Alright, so let's test another value. Let's test another. So I'm gonna test x equals so we already tested negative negative one and positive one. I'm gonna go with negative two and then positive two. So I'm going to test x equals negative 2. So negative 2, uh, 1, negative 2, negative 4, 8. So drop, negative, multiply these two, negative 2 times 1, that's a negative 2. Add these two, we get negative 4. Now multiply negative 4 times negative 2, that's a negative 8. Add these two, we get negative 12, which multiplied with negative 2 gives us positive 24 and adds up to 32. So in this case, in this case, uh, well, let's, hold on, negative 4, oh, this is supposed to be plus 8, so not, and that's negative, that's still, hmm, hold on, so negative 4, times negative 2, that's positive 8. Minus 4, that's actually positive 4. Never mind. Mm -hmm. And 4 times negative 2, oh, wait a minute, that's going to be a 0, in fact. Never mind, silly mistake. Uh, for some reason, it didn't match what I have in my notes here. So 4 times negative 2, that's a negative 8 and then zero so what do we have here x equals negative two is a zero and 
and consequently x plus 2 is a factor of f of x okay so now I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna write this um, f of x equals x plus 1 times the new factor that we discovered which is x plus 2 times whatever degraded polynomial we get from this division so the degraded polynomial okay again this is constant linear squared cubic remainder 0 which is nice uh, in this case constant linear squared so what are we going to get here I'm gonna write x squared minus 4x plus 4 x squared minus 4x plus 4 all right and then well in this case we could we could keep uh, using this the rational root theorem so that's one way Another way we could factor this out, factors of 4 that add up to negative 4, that's a negative 2, and negative 2 itself. But uh, let, let's see, let me, do, let, me, let me do it using the rational root theorem, why not? So we can practice on that. So now I'm going to test, test 2, but I'm going to test it on the new degraded polynomial which is 1, negative 4, and 4. So I'm going to drop 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and then 2 minus 4 that's a negative 2, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4, 4 minus 4, oh, 0, nice, which means that 2 is also a root, that's the remainder, so x equals 2 is a root or a 0 and therefore consequently x minus 2 is a factor of f of x alright so x minus 2 that's the new factor so I'm gonna write f of x equals, okay, these two factors that we already found and then the new factor that we discovered x minus 2 and the new degraded polynomial in this case constant oops, constant linear quadratic remainder constant linear that is x minus 2 all right x minus x minus 2 but wait a minute isn't it the same as just factoring these trinomial factors of 4 that add up to negative 4 yes it's the same so when you're doing the homework and when you're or when you're uh, taking the an example like this on a quiz or on an exam the minute you get to something that is easy to factor that you think it's easy to factor go ahead and do the factoring don't do not complicate your life in this example however i decided to use the polynomial the i mean the synthetic division just so you can see the process how do we begin doing the synthetic division with the coefficients of the original of the original given polynomial then as soon as we get up to one of the zeros the polynomial gets degraded or depressed and then we do the polynomial the synthetic division on the coefficients of the depressed polynomial we do it once it doesn't work then we do it again with another zero and it works and we get a new depressed polynomial and we use that to do the synthetic division okay however we need to let me finish by rewriting this x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 um, squared so in this case the zeros are number 1 
x equals negative 1, which we already had it here, x equals to negative 1 is a 0, and in this case it's worth to mention that this is of multiplicity multiplicity 1. And then we have this x plus 2, which gives rise to the 0, negative 2 of multiplicity of multiplicity 1 as well, because that's the power is 1 also power 1 and finally and last but not least x equals 2 is a 0 but in this case of multiplicity 2 because it, it's it's twice it has a power 2 all right okay let's move on to another example on the next example I will be a little bit more liberal about the process so again on the previous example uh, even though from the very from the very first uh, depressed polynomial we could have factored this by grouping and ultimately we we would have had the need of using the synthetic division once and we would have saved all this work but again it's good to see how it works doing every doing every iteration of finding the zero by using um, by using synthetic division okay so let's do a, another example. So we are going to apply this rational root theorem to solve an equation because we're going to factor this. So we are going to find all the factors. So find the solutions to the equation. x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus 10x squared minus 18 plus 9. All right, so let's find the p over q. p over q which in this case p it's all the factors of 9 and q it's all the factors okay don't confuse this q with this 9 my q has this little bar right here to distinguish it from the number 9 okay and well let's write down all the factors of 9 all the possible factors of 9 are plus minus 1 plus minus 3 plus minus um, plus minus 9 and all the factors of 1 are also plus minus 1. So I'm going to divide 1 by 1 to get plus minus 1, 3 by 1, plus minus 3, 9 over 1, plus minus 1. Is there ever going to be a, um, a time in which the, um, you know, the, the potential zeros are fractions? Yes, at the end of this video, because I didn't, I didn't create one one like those. I'm gonna make something up in which I will show you how to how to deal with those situations. So let's see. Um, so in this case, um, we have six potential zeros: two, four, and six. And the degree is four. So we will find out what about this. All right. So um, I, as usual, I'm going to test. Um, I'm going to test negative 1. Test negative 1 to get, okay, so negative 1 and the coefficients 1, negative 2, 10, negative 18, and 9. So drop the first one multiply these two, whatever we get, put it below the second number, which is negative 2, and add them, negative 3, negative 3 times negative 1, that's positive 3, that's going to be 13, okay, uh, wait a minute, what happened here, uh, no, never mind, um, so, 13 times negative 1, that's negative 13, minus 18, negative 31, well negative 31 times positive 31, that's um, 31, plus 9, 40, so for this 6, because this last number was not a 0, the remainder is 40, so x equals to negative 1 is not a 0, it's not a 0, so x 
plus 1 is not a factor of f of x. Well, in this case, we don't have f of x, but it would be a good idea to define this guy right here as f of x. Okay. Okay, let's test another value, another another zero. How about we test x equals one? Test x equals one to get. So I'm going to use the same coefficients because we haven't degraded anything, we haven't depressed anything. Drop multiply that's positive 1 and then we get negative 1 negative 2 plus 1 that's not a 7 that's a negative 1 that's a positive 1 rather and okay let me erase it so it looks nice so negative 1 times 1 that's a negative 1 10 minus 1 that's a negative that's actually 9 9 times 1 is 9 minus 18 we get negative 9, negative 9 times 1 that's a negative 9 and nice remainder is 0 so x equals 1 is a 0 and x plus x minus 1 rather x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. Okay, so what are we going to do here? I'm going to go back to the original equation, this one, and I'm going to write instead of this huge polynomial, I'm going to write x minus 1 times the, a polynomial with these degraded coefficients. Again, this is, again, this is constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, constant, linear, quadratic, cubic. So that means x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 9. So x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 9. And in this case, I'm not going to do more synthetic divisions. If you want to do it uh, in your leisure time, um, just to just to show these results, you should get the same. In this case, I think it's easy to see that we can factor this using factor by grouping. So I'm going to go like x minus one. I'm going to open brackets because I'm going to I'm going to group this in two in two groups. I'm going to find the GCF of the first group, which is x squared and then I'm going to get x minus 1 and I'm going to factor out a 9 times x minus 1 equals the 0 and then uh, I'm going to factor x minus 1 x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 9 x squared plus 9 rather okay so in this case set that equal to zero all right and well i'm going to get rid of the brackets and i'm going to multiply x minus one times itself that's going to give me x minus one quantity squared times x squared plus nine and that's the equation in factored form so from here i'm going to use the zero product property so in this case x minus one set it equal to zero so x plus one is a solution to the equation now observe the second the second factor in this case if we set x squared plus 9 equal to 0 we are going to get x squared equals negative 9 and then x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9 which in this case we're going to get plus minus 3i however we are not looking for imaginary solutions all we're looking is for real solutions and the legitimate solution here will only be x equals to 1 which happens to be uh, if, if we were looking at a polynomial function its graph 
would be touching the x-axis um, uh, at x equals 1 all right so would you like to see how does that look like well let me get my calculator so you can see that so I'm gonna type the I'm gonna type this factor form not the big polynomial either way is fine x minus 1 quantity squared and then times x squared plus 9 and I'm gonna graph this well I need to zoom it to I'm gonna need to zoom it to regular zoom so we can standard zoom so see how it only touches the x-axis it doesn't have any any other roots these are imaginary all right these are imaginary so so that's why there are no roots all right let me make up something uh, let me make up another uh, example in which we have in which we will only list the potential zeros I don't know maybe I'm gonna say uh, I don't know I'm gonna do uh, I need to find interesting numbers here so mm, something that doesn't that doesn't actually divide let me look for something cool here in my and my on my on the internet or rather in my test gen hopefully I can find okay list the potential zeros um, four and six no I need something even more interesting. Okay, I'm gonna do the following one. I'm gonna do um, Okay, I need um, Okay, so I'm undecided which one to take mm. 15 x to the seventh power minus 35 x to the fourth power plus 18 x cube minus uh, 4 x squared plus 7 x and the constant term I need to make that something interesting um, 36 not 36 not 25 uh, not a multiple not a number that has okay two times I'm going to do plus 8. I'm gonna do that. So in this case I have P over Q. So P over Q. So all the potential factors of 8 divided by all the potential all the all the possible factors of 15. So all the possible factors of 8. The possible factors of 8 are gonna be plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 4 and plus minus um, plus minus 8 and the potential factors of 15 plus minus 1 plus minus 3 plus minus 5 and plus minus 15 itself okay so we are going to list all the potential factors and in this case it's going to be a humongous amount of them so let's see so here first I'm gonna do the following I'm going to do I'm gonna divide all the numbers in the numerator by each of the elements in the denominator so 1 over 1 is plus minus 1 2 over 1 is 2 plus minus 2 
4 over 1 plus minus 4 8 over 1 plus minus 8 now I'm gonna do uh, all these numbers divided by 3 1 third plus minus 1 third 1 over the reason why notice I didn't uh, oh wait never mind so 1 third 2 thirds and then 4 thirds 8 thirds and then I'm gonna do 4 over 1 but in this case I'm not gonna do 4 over 1 because I already have it never mind I'm gonna divide by 5 never mind 1 fifth plus minus 1 over 5 plus minus 1 over 15 oh, 2 over 5 do I have 2 fifths already? Okay, 2 over, fi two over 5 and 4 over 5 but 4 over 5 no I don't have it yet and 8 over 5 we're not done yet now we need to divide by 15 1 over 15 1 over 3 no 2 over 15 and 4 over 15 and 8 over 15 okay let me clear this little messes here all right so how many potential zeros for this polynomial well 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 times 2 because of, because of the positives and the negatives, so potentially, thirty-two zeros. So again, the maximum number of zeros we're going to have here is 7, all right? But, uh, but we are going to have 32 to choose from, okay? So this is what we do in a situation in which we don't have that just one, like the examples I did on, on, the, on the exercises. I only have one, one denominator, one denominator, and over here I also had only one denominator and well in this case I had two denominators alright so that's what we will do and this is the end of this section I will see you on the next video